So welcome back. We've just finished with measurement of national income numericals on income with the help of income and expenditure method. And in this, we're going to do the value added method. So for before we go on, I want you to, to just go through this, a recap rather, with the formula. So in the formula, you see that we, uh, in value added, what we do is we first find out the value of output. Simply put, value of output is price into output. But then sometimes stocks are there, so it's sales plus change in stock. This gives you the value of output. And from value of output, if you deduct the, just to avoid double counting, what we do is we minus intermediate consumption. And then what we get is, the aggregate that we get is gross domestic product at market price or gross value added at market price. From there, if we want to go to factor cost, then what we'll do is from the market price, we'll minus net indirect taxes, that is indirect taxes minus subsidies. And from this, if we want to go to the net aggregate, that is net value added at factor cost, uh, then what will we do? We've got to deduct from the gross depreciation or consumption of fixed capital. So once we do that, we get what is known as domestic income, that is NDPFC, net domestic product at factor cost, or in this term, in these value added terms, what we will get is net value added at factor cost, which is the domestic income. And to this, if we add net factor income from abroad, what we get is national income. So based on this, see for a firm like for example, just to give a very small example, uh, we, we just going to calculate this. So there's a lot of mess that I've done, but anyways, just to make it very clear. So once, so okay, from the following data, we've got to calculate gross value added at factor cost and when you look at the data we can know that it is all about sales so and things like that so you can know immediately that we have to use the value added method because yes they have given us rent and profits but nothing else from the income method so it is a it is a numerical in which we are going to use the uh, we will come to a solution with the help of value added so for this, what do we do is sales plus change in stock, one plus four minus purchase of raw material minus five. And then what do you do? Once you get that, what will happen? You will get what is known as gross value added at market price. But you want something which is known as uh, they want you to get gross value added at factor cost. So from this, you will minus net indirect taxes. Okay, so that's how, that's the answer that you get. All right, so there's another numerical that we can just, um, based on a statement sum, like how do we go about it? Uh, you can just uh, have a look, uh, in which I'm going to again explain. This is again, this I've taken from the NCRD book of mine. So in this, like they've written, A imports, they're talking about, three firms here a b and c so let's see what what is their transaction and how do how will we calculate get gross value added here they what they want is gross value added at market price here so let's take it so a imports inputs worth rupees 50 and sells to b goods worth rupees 100 and to c worth rupees 70 b imports inputs worth rupees 20 and sells to C goods worth rupees 150 and finished goods worth rupees 200 to consumer household. Uh, C imports inputs worth rupees 15 and sells finished goods worth rupees 415 to households. Now in the hints they've given you that imports are an intermediate consumption. So let's just take and settle them down one by one. Now, for example, now let's just take firm A. So what is its intermediate consumption? As you read, it imports. Now put it in that intermediate consumption column. All right. So there you put it as 
50 imports and then it's selling to B put it in value of output uh, rupees 100 will come there when it sells to C rupees 70 will come there so value of output minus intermediate consumption gives you value added that is that comes to 120 now let's take B so B what does it do what is its intermediate consumption because it has taken something from B uh, B has taken from A that is 100 it comes into its intermediate consumption additive and it imports 20 that will be seen in its intermediate consumption okay and it sells to C for rupees 150 and to household for 200 so we will we will add that up and we'll add up intermediate consumption intermediate consumption and that comes to value added will be 230 now let's come to C what is the intermediate consumption of C now C has taken something from A for 70 rupees from B for 150 rupees and imports are for 15 and it sells to the household that's final uh, selling that it's done so that's value of output so what it gets it that is value of output minus intermediate consumption comes to 180 and the value of output at market price because they haven't given us net indirect taxes so simply because we don't have data on that so yes so you get that the figure 530 is the value added by uh, all these firms right so that's how it becomes you it becomes very simple when you you segregate it into value of output what, what was the value of intermediate consumption and the difference between the two will give you what is known as value added thank you